Latifa here at Auckland Zoo for Pat Topoiwa and I'm one of the conservation learning facilitators here. Now today you're going to be joining the amazing bird team focusing on an endemic species. That means it can only be found in one spot and that is the amazing Aotearoa. Now the bird you're going to be looking at is related to Elvis and Ellie May here in news and that is that they are a ratai. They are a flightless bird that doesn't have a flight bone here in their breaststroke. So we're going to walk over now to meet our amazing endemic ratites that you're going to be looking after. Make sure you pay close attention to the other educators as they tell you what you need to do and follow along in your booklet. Have a great day, have fun and we can't wait to see what you get done. Here we are down in Tawanui where we're going to be focusing on an endemic uh, ratite which means it can only be found in one place and that is here in Aotearoa. So the ratite we're going to be focusing on is a little bit smaller than the emu we were just looking at. It is the amazing nocturnal kiwi and we're going to focus on the North Island brown kiwi. Uh, but in your booklet you might have a look now and see the KWL chart. What we're going to get you to do is under the K, write down everything you already know about a kiwi because I'm sure you already have heaps of amazing information that you could put down in there. Now in the W, you're going to write any wonderings you have. So anything that you might like to ask us or anything you hope to find out during this video. And then the L, we're going to reserve that for things that we learn along the way. So let's hop inside. It's a little bit darker in there. We're going to learn a lot about the amazing kiwi today and how we care for them here at Auckland Zoo. Have lots of fun, good luck, and I'll see you at the end of your trip. Hello everybody, my name is Cornell. Did you know there are five species of kiwi in Aotearoa? Let's practice their names. The North Island Brown Kiwi, Kiwi Parauri, Kiwi Parauri. The Great Spotted Kiwi, Roroa, Roroa. The Little Spotted Kiwi, Kiwi Puku Puku, Kiwi Puku Puku. Roi, Roi, and Tokweka. Ever go practicing these names at home? Kia pai tā koutou akoranga i tēnei wā, i nā rā e pānaki kiwi parauri. Have a great day in your learnings today, especially with our brown kiwi. Kia pai te rā, noho oro mai. Kia ora, ko PJ tōku i moa. Now, the North Island Brown Kiwi has some unique and amazing adaptations that make it really, really special. Now, this kiwi and all of its cousins are actually endemic to us here in Aotearoa. And that just means that they live here in the wild and nowhere else in the rest of the world. And that's pretty cool. Now, these kiwi are part of a bigger family called the Ratite family. And that includes some of the other flightless birds which we have here at the zoo, like the ostrich from Africa and the emu from over in Australia. Now, although the kiwi doesn't fly, it rummages around on the forest floor with its big, powerful feet looking for food. Kiwi are nocturnal, which means that they're active at nighttime when we're probably fast asleep. Now, unfortunately, they don't have the best eyesight, but they make up for this with their excellent sense of smell. And they rely on this to get around the forest floor safely and forage for food. Now, kiwi are the only birds in the whole world that have their nostrils right at the tip of their beak. Now this means that they actually have one of the shortest beaks out of any bird in the whole world because technically a beak is measured from the nostrils to the tip. Whether you want to call it the longest beak or the shortest beak in the world, it uses it to find its food. Okay, so it can stick its beak out in front of its face and it uses it a little bit like a metal detector, picking up any vibrations and movements underground and they can feel a little worm wriggling about three centimeters below the earth. Once they've found it, they stick their beak into the ground and then they pull out their kai ready for lunch. Now the North Island Brown Kiwi has two different layers of feathers and each layer has a slightly different job. Right near their skin, they've got a short layer of 
very soft down feathers. This works a little bit like an insulator, like a soft woolen jumper, keeping them nice and cozy on the forest floor. Then over the top of those feathers, there are some longer, dark brown feathers that look a bit like hair. And these are nice and greasy and keeps them waterproof. Just like having a nice waterproof rain jacket over the top of your soft woolen jumper. Now, another adaptation that Kiwi have are their long claws and powerful feet. These feet help them to get around the forest floor in search of food. Now, these birds are territorial, so they can mark their territory by leaving smelly droppings around the forest floor and making some calls at night time. If they do come across another kiwi though, they can use these powerful feet and legs to defend themselves. So their strong legs and sharp claws are also their most important defense against predators down on the ground, like stoats and rats or even cats. Kiwi usually spend most of their daylight hours tucked away down in their burrows underground in the dark. But the female kiwi actually likes to lay her eggs down there too. Interestingly, the North Island brown kiwi do something a bit strange compared to other birds where the male will actually incubate the eggs himself. So dad will sit on the nest and on the eggs for between 75 and 90 days. That's three whole months of incubation period. Female kiwi have the largest egg to body size ratio out of any manu in the entire world. And that means little baby kiwi hatches out of its egg already very, very large. Also, when it hatches out of its egg, it's already covered in feathers and doesn't even need to feed from mum and dad. All it needs to do is feed itself using the yolk sac from its own egg. Then after that, it's ready to venture out of the burrow to find its own food. Well, I hope you've enjoyed learning about all the Kiwi's adaptations and what makes them unique to us here in Old Turtle. Next, we're going to check in with another one of my mates and find out what makes the Kiwi habitat so unique as well and how we've made their home here at Auckland Zoo. Now, Aotearoa is home to many nocturnal species, such as the weta, ruru, and kiwi. Now, these animals are most active during nighttime, and so it can be really difficult to see them active when you're out in the wild. Here at Auckland Zoo, we have a night habitat in Te Waunui called Te Pōr. Now, this purpose-built night habitat is on reverse daylight hours, which means that it's actually nighttime in here during visitor hours. And this gives visitors the best chance to see an active kiwi when they come here to Auckland Zoo. North Island brown kiwi are typically found in lowland and coastal native forests. Here at Auckland Zoo we have four kiwi that live in Te Pō for our night habitat. This habitat is carefully designed to replicate what a native forest in Aotearoa would look like. We regularly collect the leaves that are on the forest floor here in Te Pō and they're checked for contaminants before being put out onto the forest floor. This offers kiwi both an aspect of habitat design because I mean, it looks like a native forest, but it also provides them with behavioural enrichment because they get a chance to forage for any food or bugs as they would do out in the forest. Te Pōr is also a multi-species habitat and it's not just home to kiwi. We also have other native nocturnal animals such as the ruru, witapunga and kōkapu. Now, multi-species habitats can be enriching environments for these animals because it's similar to the conditions that they would live in out in the wild. Behavioural enrichment gives animals an opportunity to display their natural behaviour. Kiwi in captivity have a really special diet that includes mints, apples, carrot, pears, peas, corn, wheat germ, calcium powder and phosphorus powder. Now this food is all mixed together and then placed into long tubes that is then buried in the ground. The kiwi then use their exceptional sense of smell to search and forage for this food, just as they would out in the native forest of Aotearoa. Now the other thing that the keepers also do here in Te Pō is they regularly turn over the soil and they then scatter earthworms and insects so that the kiwis get behavioural enrichment searching for these insects and earthworms 
as they would again out in the wild. As part of your keepers for the day training, you now have two tasks to complete. Your first task is to have a go designing a habitat for the four kiwi that currently live in Tim Fourth here at Auckland Zoo. Your second task is to have a go designing an enrichment activity for the kiwi to enjoy in their brand new habitat that you've designed. Thank you so much for coming along today and learning all about this amazing species with us. And please remember to share your mucky with us at Auckland Zoo. We love to see what you guys get up to. Until next time, crack it there. Hello Trini Keepers, I hope you've been enjoying learning about the very special kiwi that we find right here in Aotearoa. You will already know that kiwi are flightless birds and this makes them vulnerable to predation by introduced pest species like stoats and rats. These mammalian predators are an especially big threat to the kiwi eggs and their chicks. Once the chicks hatch out of the eggs, they're left to fend for themselves. Without their parents around to protect them, these kiwi chicks make really easy prey for stoats and other introduced mammalian predators. One of the ways that Auckland Zoo helps the North Island brown kiwi in the wild is through an awesome conservation project called Operation Nest Egg. Members of our amazing bird team help community groups in Northland and the Coromandel to collect eggs from underneath the male kiwi after about 65 days of incubation. And then they're incubated further until they hatch. Once they hatch, the chicks are released onto predator-free kōhanga or crèche islands where they can grow up in a safe habitat. Once the chicks are older and able to fend for themselves, they're removed from the islands and released back onto the mainland in the locations where they were originally found. Through this program, the survival rate of the chicks is much higher and this has helped the populations of the North Island brown kiwi to grow over the years. Auckland Zoo is proud to have been involved with Operation Nest Egg since the late 1990s and to date we have released 384 North Island brown kiwi chicks. While we might not have kiwi living in our backyards, there are lots of other special animals that live in the areas near our homes. For your next task, you're going to have a go at building a wetter hotel, a bird feeder or a lizard home to encourage more native wildlife to come into the areas near you. Part of being a zookeeper is also about advocating for the species you work with. So for this next part, you could either complete the activity we just talked about or you could make a poster to encourage people to look after kiwi populations in the wild. Your poster could be focused on encouraging people to plant native trees or trap pests in their backyard or maybe even be responsible pet owners. Have fun tamarikima and don't forget to share your awesome mahi with us here at Auckland Zoo. Until next time, kakite. to share your work with us, either by emailing us, dropping it off at the zoo, or with the hashtag createwithaucklandzoo. We look forward to seeing you next time for another trainee keeper where we'll be working with the primate team. Have lots of fun, keep learning, and we'll see you later.